This is the Palin Update on Saranet Radio. I'm Kevin Shola. Who can argue a movement that is about the people and for the people? Remember, all political power is inherent in the people, and government is supposed to be working for the people. That is what this movement is about. Tea Party dead? Palin endorsements not worth a hill of beans? think again. After backing Richard Murdoch in Indiana, Sarah Palin followed that victory up with the endorsement of little-known rancher Deb Fisher in Nebraska. Once down double digits in the polls, Fisher parlayed her Palin nod into a huge Cornhusker win. So Sarah Palin is two for two in 2012, and now the Mama Grizzly is hungry for more. She's endorsed a super candidate in Texas, and today he is here. Ted Cruz joins us on Sarah Net Radio. Plus, we'll look back at Fisher's remarkable night in Nebraska. Right now, he is an American Grizzlies United candidate, and he is also officially endorsed by Governor Sarah Palin. Ted Cruz, GOP Senate hopeful in Texas. Thanks so much for being on the Palin Update. It is great to be with you. Sir, you mentioned the phones were ringing off the hook in the Lone Star State following the Palin endorsement. Did you expect such an immediate and tangible boost? I'll tell you, it, it has exceeded all expectations. I mean, it, it's, it's been absolutely incredible. The minute Governor Palin endorsed me in this race, our phones lit up like a Christmas tree. And we had, in the next 48 hours, over 1,000 contributions came into the campaign. I mean, I mean, it is electric, the impact on the momentum that it's had. And do you feel even more confidence in your Texas battle now that Palin-powered hopefuls have already come through in Indiana and Nebraska. I, a- absolutely. I mean, if you look at, at, at the record so far, in Indiana, Dick Luger, the 35-year-old moderate establishment incumbent, was 10 points up in the polls. Uh, and then two weeks ago, Governor Palin endorsed Richard Murdoch, the conservative challenger, and last week, Murdoch didn't just win, he won by 21 points. I mean, it was just a staggering impact. And there is no doubt Governor Palin's endorsement was the pivotal moment in that transformation. In Nebraska, Deb Fisher was in third place behind the establishment candidate with all the money Governor Palin endorsed. And this week, Deb Fisher won outright. Again, Governor Palin's endorsement turned that race upside down. Palin talking about you said your conservative principles, passionate defense of our Constitution and our free market system come at a time when these cornerstones of our freedom and prosperity are under attack. Isn't that everything right there? We need good old conservative policies and we need to uphold that amazing document known as the Constitution, especially while others are doing just the opposite. Yeah, look, that's that's exactly right. There, There has never been a time in our nation's history when liberty was more under assault. And, and the unhappy truth is it has been establishment career politicians of both parties that have gotten us into this mess. Uh, there's an elite in Washington that just want to hold on to power, and they can't say no to spending, and they've built up a $16 trillion national debt that is putting us on the path to Greece and Italy and where much of Europe is. And all over the country in 2010, Voters said enough already with tired, establishment, moderate politicians. Give us new leaders who are strong conservatives and fighters. And Governor Palin all over the country made an enormous difference in 2010, seeking out strong conservative leaders and fighters and overthrowing the moderate establishment that didn't want to stand for principle. And in 2012, Governor Palin's influence and willingness to stick her neck out and fight to ensure that we have strong leaders to help turn this country around is is having a massive, massive impact all across the country. Sir, many conservatives were disappointed with the crop of uh, GOP presidential candidates this time around. Is is Palin on to something here, trying to make sure the Senate is filled with common-sense conservatives, thus making it almost necessary for the eventual president to lean right? Look, I, I think that's exactly right. The Senate is going to be the battleground on every issue that matters. If you want to repeal Obamacare, and I intend to lead the fight to repeal every syllable of every word of Obamacare, the Senate is going to be the battleground. If you want to dramatically reduce the size and power and spending of the federal government and our national debt, the Senate's the battleground. 
if you want to enact fundamental tax reform, if you want to open up our natural resources, exploration and development, the Senate is the battleground, and the Senate is at a tipping point. There are right now six or seven strong constitutional conservatives, and they're outnumbered. They're outnumbered by Democrats, but even more importantly, they're outnumbered by fellow Republicans who often won't stand and fight. If we can double their numbers, if we can grow the number of strong free market conservatives to 10 or 12 or 15, that, that will be a critical mass in the Senate. That's what it will take to drive a strong conservative agenda, an additional half dozen. And Governor Palin is making a major national difference, helping strong conservatives get elected so that we have the leadership in Washington to stop the Obama agenda, to get back to principles of liberty, and to restore our Constitution. You know how busy people are uh, with work, if they're fortunate enough to be employed in Obama times, but also with family and other responsibilities. And as you know, to get people to do something for free is always difficult. Even supporters of a candidate or a cause, it's like pulling teeth to get them actively involved sometime. But you're sure. turning out the volunteers in droves. Why is that? What's the crew's secret? Look, the, the, the crew's secret is, is the, the, the same secret that we have seen from leaders all over the country, whether it was Marco Rubio in Florida or Mike Lee in Utah or Rand Paul in Kentucky or Pat Toomey in Pennsylvania or Ron Johnson in Wisconsin. It is to stand for principle. It is to stand for liberty, to stand for the Constitution, and not to give in and compromise and cut deals and bargain away our liberty. And, you know, there is an incredible excitement all across Texas and all across the country right now, because our country's in crisis. We're really at a crossroads. If we do not stop this explosion of government spending and debt, we're going to lose our country. And as a result, millions of Americans, millions of Texans are standing up and saying, we've got to fight to save our nation, to save that shining city on the hill, as Reagan famously put it. And that's where the strength of this campaign is coming from. It's not the candidate. Look, it's coming from the people, because the people are ready to take our country back. I've often said, in 1979, it took Jimmy Carter to give us Ronald Reagan. And I think the greatest legacy of Barack Obama is going to be a new generation of leaders of the Republican Party who stand up and fight for liberty and fight for the Constitution. And Governor Palin is playing a major, major role in helping bring that new generation of conservative leaders to the forefront nationally. It really is exciting and encouraging to see so many, not just the candidates, but like you said, the supporters and volunteers with that fire in the belly. Your state has early voting, so many Texans have already cast their ballots. Make things different for you or a special challenge as opposed to an election that's all on one day besides absentees? Well, we've got two weeks of early voting, so early voting continues until May 25th, and then Election Day is on May 29th. Uh, north of half the votes are expected to be cast in early voting. So I would urge, number one, every one of your listeners in the state of Texas, please come out. Please early vote. I ask for your support at the polls. Number two, I would ask every one of your listeners to reach out and get five of their friends to show up and vote and early vote. Particularly this election, it is expected to be a relatively low turnout election, which means it is going to be dominated by the most conservative, the most passionate voters. And so if you bring five of your friends to vote and cast a vote supporting us in this campaign, it will make a huge difference. And I'll tell you the third piece that is absolutely critical uh, is if each of your listeners in Texas and nationally could go online to our website, tedcruz.org, T-E-D-C-R-U-Z.org, and make a contribution. You know, we've raised over $6.1 million, and it's come from 21,000 donors in over 850 Texas cities and from all 50 states. My opponent, who is the incumbent lieutenant governor, he is very much an establishment moderate. He is funded by just about every lobbyist in the state of Texas and most of the lobbyists in Washington. He is independently wealthy, so he has put $8 million of his own money into this race, running $2 million a week of nasty, false attack ads coming at me hard. The moderate establishment is circling the wagons around him. He's increased taxes. He has increased spending. He is, he is your typical establishment.
establishment moderate, and yet we are being supported by conservative activists all over Texas and all over all over the nation. And I would ask every one of your listeners, if you think it is important that the next senator from Texas be a strong conservative and a fighter, if you think it is important that we have leadership in Washington to stand up to Obama to fight to stop this explosion of government spending and debt, I need your help. I ask you to come online, contribute as much as you can. If we keep raising the money, if we keep getting the message out, we're going to win this race. And I'll make a promise to you, when we win this race, Texas will lead the fight, standing side and side with so many patriots who are rising up to lead the fight, to turn our country around, to defend liberty, and to get back to the Constitution. Well, you hit it on the head there, sir, on uh, many counts. I know lots of Palin backers are just as sick of establishment Republicans as they are of Democrats. And you signed the Repeal Obama Pledge. We know that's a cornerstone of your message to voters and what you're all about, a separation from you and a lot of people out there that are running. And Ted Cruz, I have a good feeling about this, as long as your incredible volunteers and contributors keep it up. And we appreciate you, and thanks for spending some time with us. Well, thank, thank you so much, and thank you for your passion and leadership and the passion and leadership of, of, of every one of your listeners. Together, we, we are standing up to take our country back and, and to ensure uh, that, that, that our kids and grandkids in, enjoy the same incredible freedom and opportunity that all of us have been blessed to enjoy that is the legacy of being Americans. Senator, thank you. <laughs> Senator to be. <laughs> I, I like the way you think, and, and from your lips to God's ears. See that? I, uh, that, 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 that wasn't on purpose, was it? <laughs> <laughs> TedCruz.org. TedCruz.org. Go there, ladies and gentlemen. Make some calls. Send in a few bucks. Palin Power in full effect right now. As we saw this past week, Sarah Palin's relevance is sky high. Deb Fisher came out of nowhere to stun the establishment in Nebraska, and it's no coincidence that her campaign caught fire after the barracuda bounce provided by one Sarah Louise Heath Palin. Primary night in Nebraska was exciting to say the least. Early returns showed Fisher down, but as more and more tallies came in, well, she continued to close the gap. Eventually, the rancher surged in front, and then never looked back, building a bigger lead on her way to clinching her party's nomination. After Fisher's stirring win, Sarah Palin issued a statement of congratulations. Palin saying, the message from the people of Nebraska is simple and powerful. America is looking for real change in Washington, and common sense conservatives like Deb Fisher represent that change. I applaud moms like Deb Fisher who are bold enough to step up and run on a conservative platform to restore America and protect our children's future. Powerful folks, Palin Power. It worked for Murdoch and Fisher in their primaries, and now it is working for Cruz. Sarah Palin, doing it her way, exactly why we respect her so much. Folks, you can now follow us on Twitter, at Saranet Radio, and we're also on Facebook, too, so please like Saranet Radio on Facebook. And if you want to stick it to the left, pick up one of our new Saranet Radio bumper stickers. Just email us, send your name and address, and we'll send you one of our great-looking new stickers. Go to saranetradio.net and click on free Saranet Radio bumper sticker. Well, that'll just about do it for this edition of the Palin Update on Saranet Radio. Visit saranetradio.net for continuing coverage of Governor Palin. I want to thank everyone here at Saranet Radio. Thanks to Ted Cruz. And thank you for listening today. Please be sure to join us next time for another edition of the Palin Update. I'm Kevin Shola. Have a pleasant day.